Madi Sissoko, he is in the portal. Michigan State basketball also has another portal target in their sights. And then we dive into the mailbag to answer the simple question. Yeah, will next year be more fun than this one? All right, let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for kicking off your weekend with us here at Locked on Spartans. Your team in green and white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe, comment below on YouTube, smash that five-star rating if you're listening on the podcast. Do whatever makes you happy. Now, before getting into the bulk of the show here, just a quick programming note. I know that all week we were teasing this chat with Matt Wenzel of MLive. We're going to push that to Sunday because, well, there was breaking news on the basketball front that happened today that's going to slide that back. And then on Monday's show is going to be a recruiting chat with Brian Smith. So if anything happens between now and Monday, we're going to get to it on Tuesday, unless it's something insane like Tom Izzo and Jonathan Smith both resign. Like uh, we, we might make an exception there. But just to give everyone the heads up, that's what we got here for the next few days. Now, let's get into the mix. Madi Sissoko, after 12 days of the offseason where there was no Michigan State Spartan that announced they were going to go into the portal, as you know by now, he is in the transfer portal. And it's starting to look like that, hey, maybe he is going to come back. We had Graham Couch on last week, and he even said that it's looking more likely than not that he is coming back. And everything that I was hearing, too, kind of matched that. But obviously, that did not commence. He is in the portal. Now, uh, last year, 3.3 points per game, 5.1 rebounds per game. And one stat that I do want to throw out there, I got to say, he was a pretty good free throw shooter for his build and his position. He shot 70% from the free throw stripe. I'm not going to add any other further commentary on his game because, quite frankly, we all saw it. We all know that there's a reason why that maybe both parties involved here, this is going to make sense for everyone involved. So instant thoughts. Now, this happened about nine hours ago, but still, the thoughts I had right after it was announced and what I have right now kind of remain the same. First and foremost, I hope that he finds a great spot for his final year. Now, whether that's meeting up with Dwayne Stevens over at Western Michigan or following Mark Montgomery, coaches he's familiar with already, great, awesome. But nevertheless, I hope that in the midst of this probably like not great situation that he does have to leave the school after four years, I, I hope that it is a nice end to his college career because point blank period, you guys already know this by now about Madi Sissoko, but we will hammer it into the ground. One of the best human beings of all time. Not just to walk through Michigan State, not just to walk through the Michigan State basketball program. I'm just talking on the surface level of all, what, 8 billion people on this planet? He's in the upper 1%. This is a kid that saw his opportunity and took it to grow his Madi Sissoko Foundation. Now, what that has done... But, you know, it, it's only put a school back in his hometown over in Mali in Africa. He's also done work with just the water supply there. If you want to donate to the Madi Sissoko Foundation, we're going to have that link in the description of this podcast and YouTube video. Strongly encourage anyone to go give some coin over there because it is going to extraordinary efforts. So, yes, this guy, instead of NIL, pocketing it for himself, he saw his opportunity. And you talk about parlaying that into something amazing. What he's been doing over there in his home country, like, my God, you can't say enough nice things about this kid. Now, that said, this is the really uncomfortable part of this discussion here. It is unfortunate, but it was necessary for someone in that center room to move on. And I know that that's like probably the meanest and just cold-hearted thing to possibly say after talking about how great of a human being he was. But look, for Michigan State to get better on the court next year, I just don't think that there's any possible way you go into next season with the same three centers that you have. 
We saw it all in 30, what, 33 or 34 games it was last year. How bad of a swing and a miss that was for Tom Izzo and the staff to ride into this season with the centers. And I get it. Jackson Kohler, his season was hurt because he had an injury. I, I, I don't think that he was going to grow four inches before he had that broken foot. But nevertheless, there were some glaring holes with the center position. You need spots this offseason because with this departure of my Sissoko, right now you have two open scholarship spots that you can play with in the portal. Technically, it's actually just one right now, but we're still all waiting for A.J. Hogard to make his announcement that literally everyone is expecting him to make that he's going to be in the transit portal and not coming back to Michigan State. So I guess for sake of conversation, we'll call it one and a half open scholarship spots, even though like like he's pretty much said as much himself that he's going to be leaving after the season. So nevertheless, you needed spots right here. I don't see a scenario where Madi does make that jump from fourth to fifth year and becomes this great or even average center, to put it bluntly. So, yes, this gives Michigan State an opportunity to add two pieces this offseason. Now, they have two needs, in my opinion, and a lot of other state fans' opinions out there, a center okay, and a scoring wing. There's going to be one that we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, but... This also changes the conversation that we had on yesterday's show because Oakland star, Horizon League Player of the Year, Trey Townsend, he dives in the portal. Yesterday, my whole thing was that, uh, sure, great player. He's awesome. With the one spot that we have right now, that doesn't really help Michigan State. I don't see how adding Townsend to slide Booker to the five and Cohen Carr to the three really makes Michigan State that much better than they were last year. And sure, if they had more spots, maybe you add a portal wing and then Trey Townsend, maybe we can stomach that a little more. Well, would you look at that? That scenario is unfolding before our eyes. So let's say that you do add a wing and Townsend or you add a center and Townsend. Fine. And I think that they're going to go more towards the wing here. Again, they've targeted Javon Hadley. They are targeting Frankie Fiddler over at Omaha, which, by the way, great name. We're going to get more into him in a hot second. But, look, if Cohen Carr can play less of the three and more of the four, I think that benefits Michigan State. Now, we talked a lot about that yesterday, and Corey wrote in on Twitter. She had underscore sports. You are smarter than I. Okay, first of all, Corey, I'm going to dispute that right there. I got a very hard time believing that. Anyway, how can you say that Townsend at six foot six is a small four and in the same breath label Cohen Carr as a four at six foot five? If Carr is a four, he needs a transfer to the group of five level. He has to be a three. Townsend is acceptable if somehow he learns the three. So our issue with Townsend and him playing the three for example, is that he made most of his hay for Oakland on the low block and also just laterally. I think he lacks defensively a little bit. I again, every other aspect of his game, great player, even at a bit undersized at six foot six. But why do I think that Colin Carr is a four, even though he's six foot five? First off, I I think that it still can work at six foot five. And the player that I often bring up when I you know compare where we should see Colin Carr in a few years here is Brandon Dawson, another guy that was six foot six. Undersized for the traditional four position, but man, with his athleticism, with the way he can play above the rim, with his rebounding, with his defense, that is just where he found his home. So why do I think Carr is maybe not an ideal three on offense or defense? Well, offensively, it just comes down to shooting for me. I mean, I, he's not going to be mistaken as a jump shooter. Oh, God, maybe ever in his career, but certainly not last year or this upcoming year. And also on defense, this is something we've seen throughout the year, is that just guarding someone on the perimeter wasn't his forte. Laterally, he wasn't that great, which is bizarre to say because he is a dynamic athlete, one of the best athletes to ever walk through the doors of Breslin Center. But, yeah, I think he is more of that for guarding people that are just maybe a little physically bigger than him, playing on that low block and also cleaning up some duties with the rebounding playing above the rim, tip slams, things of that nature. So, but I mean, just to go back to your point, because I mean, Corey's not the only one here that's saying that Townsend can play the three. We've been hearing that a lot. Could it work? Sure. I guess. Like, I mean, he did have a good clip from three point land and you don't have to be an ace three point shooter to play the three, but still, I think your game should be more well-rounded than just on the low blocks there. And I don't, we'll, we'll, we'll see again. 
this is a very real possibility. I mean, Townsend to Michigan State, I'm not calling it a done deal by any means, but they're having the conversations, at least, which is more than can be said about a lot of players. So there we go. We're going to talk more about the portal here in a hot second. But first, you need to talk your ears off about Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with the 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th, so get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply, and now for some good old legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match must keep robin hood ira for five years the three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions robin hood ira available to u.s customers in good standing robin hood financial llc member sipc is a registered broker dealer all right talking more michigan state hoops right now i'm locked on spartans thanks a lot guys really do appreciate you taking some time out of your day to listen here now before going more into some transfer portal, I know I keep teasing this other name, Frankie Fiddler, which is one of the best names I've ever seen in the portal. But I do want to talk about what happens at the center position next year should they actually just add, let's say, a guy like Townsend and then a portal wing. Let's say they only they, they don't even address really the center position here. Is that going to be enough? Well, I, it's going to be Carson Cooper who, look, you could see a jump from him from sophomore to junior year. I think offensively he's still a little bit away from being average, but his defense is coming along, right? And Kohler, flip that around, it's kind of the opposite. I mean, his offense, got to work on the finishing a little more. The footwork is like no question. He has some of the best feet that we've seen in East Lansing since Derek Nix. It's just the finishing has got to be there, but the defense is lacking and got at a six foot eight frame. That might just always be the case here. But is this telegraphing that, hey, uh, Xavier Booker really might play more five this year than we're led on to believe? Now, I would doubt that's a traditional five where he is just always on the low block. I think they're always going to want him floating around the perimeter in some capacity. But this might be a sign that we're serious about playing small ball next year because when we had the Trey Townsend conversation yesterday, been hearing a lot of this too. Uh, on Twitter, whether it be some comments, is, hey, well, Michigan State plays positionless basketball. Like, this era of basketball is positionless. Why are you so hell-bent on talking about a four and a five? Like, is is it is it me that is so honed in on that? Or was it the head coach of the team last year that made sure that there was a traditional one, a two, a three, a four, and a five? Like, we didn't see as much small ball as I wanted to see and probably as you wanted to see, but maybe this is a sign of, hey, we will switch things up. We will have Xavier Booker just play more five. So again, this is going to be a stay tuned, wait and see sort of thing. But as we go into some more portal talk here, let's just get an update on Javon Hadley. He's visiting Iowa State. He actually currently might be in Ames, Iowa right now as we are speaking. Now the dead period, Actually, no, that can't be possible because I'm already losing track of my days here. The dead period starts on Thursday, right now, as we are talking April 4th. There's a week-long dead period. There's no contact or any visits in the next week. But before the dead period started, Javon Hadley, report has it, was at Iowa State. Now, he is not committed to the Cyclones, at least of time of recording. I know full well that Three minutes after I'm done publishing this episode, he will probably commit to the Cyclones. But, hey, there's still a door open for maybe Michigan State to have a chance as things stand right now. Again, that won't happen until after the dead period, should he even visit. But let's talk about a kid that is visiting after the dead period right now because Joe Tipton of On3, he reported this. Now, Frankie Fiddler, kid out of uh, Omaha, he posted this himself on Instagram that he's down to Final Four, but Joe Tipton made mention that he has already visited three of his Final Four schools, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Creighton. 
And who's that last school that he has yet to visit? Well, you've probably guessed it. It's Michigan State. So to get in a little more on this kid, six foot seven wing player from Omaha. He was all Summit League first team over there. And, uh, you know, just averaged 20.1 points, 6.3 rebounds, and two assists as a junior. And his first two years over at Omaha, he also averaged double digit scoring. So this guy has been a bucket from the jump in the college game. Now he scores from all over. He's a pretty solid driver. He's crafty with his dribbling and how he finishes in the lane, but career 35% three point shooter four ish attempts per game this year. But this is a stat that I really love 85% free throw shooter on his career. Many times you can marry a free throw percentage with three point percentage to see how good a shooter really is. So there's reason to believe that 35% could actually be improved on because he's been steady at that free throw clip of 85%. Whereas his first year of college, he was 42% from three last year, 25%. And now he was closer to, I think 36% is where he was his junior year. So that's a long way of saying a legitimate three point threat. So this is fun. Like, this would be great to have Frankie Fiddler. Again, I'll say that name again. Frankie Fiddler. Woo! That name's got some pop to it. Now, this is going to be a tough battle, though. Before we start pr uh, printing out these, these Fiddler jerseys at the NIL store, um, this is going to be a tough battle because, again, I'll go through the final three again, or the other final three schools again. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Creighton. Now, Nebraska and Creighton are going to be tough outs because he is from Nebraska. Okay, this could be a hometown battle here. And actually, believe it or not, this is something I learned over the weekend with having some conversations with some people that know something about everything about NIL. Creighton has some of the strongest NIL in the nation. Like, we're talking like borderline Kentucky and Duke level NIL. Now, Michigan State is no stranger to having some money, too, for their NIL, but that's the conversation of balancing. All right, do you want your transfer to be the highest paid player coming in? Could that cause a rift in the locker room? I don't, that's not my problem to sort out. But yes, Creighton is a legitimate threat whenever there is a transfer portal target out there. Now, Wisconsin, Wisconsin is a fascinating opponent for this because Chucky Hepburn, the point guard over at Wisconsin, was high school teammates with Frankie Fiddler. I'm assuming they're still friends. I'm assuming they still talk. I assume that they still remember the glory days back in high school when they were probably tuning up every single opponent that they faced. So, yeah, that's what's going to make it tough. But what you do like as a Michigan State Spartan fan is that, hey, Tom Izzo and gang are going to have the last say with this. All right. And, hey, if you add Frankie Fiddler, if it happens, we'll talk more about it. But just on the surface – I do love that right now, that is a guy that you just plug in immediately to play the three. And who do you platoon behind him? A Garrick Norman, a guy that you kind of want to turn into Frankie Fiddler. And I know that's asking a lot, asking for, you know, 20 points, six assists per, or six, six rebounds per game, two assists per game. But it's the same, just, hey, he's a shooter, can finish in the lane, same build. So, Hey, Gary, if you didn't learn enough as a redshirt freshman, here is a very experienced college player that you could play behind right now. And also, it lets Cohen Carr play some more four. Because it's not just, hey, do they think that Cohen Carr is a three? Like, they, they might have to just play him at the three out of necessity, kind of the same way they had to do it with Jaden Akins. They had to play Akins at the three out of necessity because, well, his other position was log jam, and he just had to throw him somewhere. So we're going to keep an eye on this one. This would be a very exciting one. Let's not get it twisted here. But, yeah, we're going to be back here in a hot second to go through some mailbag questions like, will next year be a time to smile? But first, I need to talk your ears off about the Game Time app, my favorite ticketing app out there. Now, I love Game Time for a whole list of reasons. One of the reasons I'm going to start with, actually, I usually talk about the money and how much they save. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I just love how no-nonsense game time is. All right, when you go on the app, you're getting an actual picture of your actual seat. All right, it's two taps. The tickets are sent straight to your phone. And also, when you are looking at these ticket prices on the app or on the website, it's very easy to find out how much the ticket actually costs. I can't tell you how many times I've bashed my head through a wall thinking, hey, on another ticketing app, oh, that's cool. These are cheap tickets. And then, wham, when you go to check out, 
They double the price because of all the ludicrous fees. No, Game Time does not do that to you. This is a transparent app. They also want to save you money with their flash deals throughout the week of an event. Or, hey, if you're just walking up to a venue before the game or the concert, they're going to have last-minute ticket deals. Folks, save money immediately. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked. Locked on college for $20 off. Download the game time app today. It's last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Now let's go swimming here in the mailbag. Locked on Spartans at gmail.com. Also, Sheehan underscore sports if you ever have any questions. This one comes from Kayla, which by the way, great, great koozie saleswoman right there. Just I'm actually about to head down south in this beautiful country of ours, and I'm bringing some of her uh, koozies that she made for uh, yours truly down there. Just great work over there. Try to remember to throw her uh, Etsy store in this description too. A lot of links in this description today. She has a question. Will next year be more fun or less fun than this year? This came off the heels of an episode where we talked about how miserable of a sports year this was. Football, we don't have to rehash all that. Basketball, incredibly underwhelming. Hockey, my God, sky-high excitement, except for one problem. You lost to the one team in the entire country that it really hurts to lose to. Uh, we're just one game short of a Frozen Four. So, yeah, we've been really moping around here. So, Kayla coming in with a very simple but very important question. Will next year be more fun or less fun than this year? I've got a quick answer that, of course, I'm going to drag out here. But it's going to be more fun, guys. It's going to be more fun because both football and basketball, we'll focus on the two biggest sports here, are signs of a new beginning. All right? Football, not just new, but also just a new attitude going into the season. Last year, we're all going into the season being like, um, if this doesn't work, it's really time to panic about the future of how all this is going to unfold here. We just did one bowl gameless season. Another one wouldn't just be infuriating, but it'd be very outright concerning at the future of this program. Whereas this year, let's say for some reason Michigan State doesn't go to a bowl game, and I, I think they will. Let's say they do go 5-7 and seven again. All right, maybe you see things during this first year under Jonathan Smith where you can talk yourself into, okay, there's a rebuild coming, right? I mean, and... Look, guys, at least this year for football with the transfer quarterback, Aiden Childs, with just the newness of the offense that might score more than 19 points per game this year, it's just going to be more enjoyable. And look, I I'm not saying that, hey, if they lose like 42 to 35 against, oh, we'll call it Indiana, that I'll get on here and I'll just smile anyway because at least it was a fun way to lose. No, 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 like it'll still suck, but my God. Some of the just the, the massive issues amongst many of them for football last year was just how excruciating it was to watch that team last year. Guys, it it it, it was I would have rather had just two root canals every Saturday in hindsight than watching all 12 of those games. Because they weren't just blowouts sometimes. There were seven games last year with just one offensive touchdown or less. Seven of those games where the offense scores one or less touchdown. I know that you probably remember how brutal that season was, but just to reiterate it, just to reiterate how low the bar is for enjoyment this year, that that's, that's, uh, that's how bad it was. Now for basketball, this year's team, I'm going to shoot you guys straight, was just downright aggravating. All right, this was an old, experienced group that just could never, ever put it together and were just painfully average during the entire year. Now, next year, look, it depends on how they do in the portal. It depends on what the roster looks like a month from now. Because I don't know if next year will be any better at the end of the year as far as where Michigan State will be seated in March Madness. But dang it, at least it's a new chapter. At least the Jeremy Fears era will commence. Jace Richardson, who is just doing fantastic in his months leading up to becoming a Spartan officially this fall. Like he he is hot in the streets right now. I, I mean, guys, this is a welcome turn of the page to a new chapter for Michigan State basketball. So look, I, expectations are lowish going in for both sports, which, which helps, but they're also attainable expectations too. So this team can make a bowl game. This basketball team can be fine, but for both of them, it is the start 
of a new chapter, and it will just be more exciting to watch. I just the football was, and I think maybe we what's 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 the expression? We we lost the view of the forest in the trees or something like that. Like it was bad enough going through football with everything off the field last year, but man, when when you actually look at the games themselves, whew, I mean that that's the worst year that knock knock on wood. That's probably the, the, just the worst viewing experience here that we could ever imagine. Now, CNBC wrote in intentionally open-ended, which sport will give our fan base greater joy next year, football or basketball? Football. It, it's fo I, I truly think it's football. And uh, right now, I don't think it's close. Basketball might have something to say about that. But look, again, this team could very well just go 6-6 six and six this year. They might pick up a bad loss, let's say, to Maryland once again earlier this year. And like at the end of the year, you're thinking, huh, should I really be that jazzed about owning a serve pro bull hoodie and at the end of this? Like, no, but uh, I, uh, again, guys. Aiden Childs, young quarterback. Let's say he doesn't hit his maximum potential right off the bat. At, at, at least we could probably start piecing together where we see the future of Michigan State basketball. Now, let's get to a mailbag question that we've been sitting on here for a while. This is another one. Uh, okay, this. Yeah, no, this is a good one. Sorry, we're going to jump to you, Logan. Uh, if you had to bet $5,000 on Izzo to make another Final Four or not, even money both sides, which side are you taking? I don't. I don't want to ruin everyone's like Friday or whatever day you're listening to this right now. But uh, let's say Izzo has like five ish years left. I don't know. He could have twenty five years left for all we know. I would bet no. And here's why: UConn, when they started their March Madness run, yeah, we're talking. We're talking the UConn team playing right now. The the one that looks like could just get to the Eastern Conference Finals if they played in the NBA. Their odds to get to a Final Four were still plus 125. And this is one of the most dynamic, most unstoppable college teams in recent memory. Even they had plus odds to make the Final Four when it all started. All right, so it never is a coin toss. And, of course, like Logan alluded to that, like let's just say for hypothetical talk, it is, it is even money right now. It is so hard to get to a Final Four, and that is why – if Izzo never gets his second national title, I will still consider him one of the elite coaches of all time because he got to eight of these things. Eight Final Fours is impressive. There are many programs that don't even have half of that number, let alone the same coach which all, with all those in his treasure chest. But, man, it is such a crapshoot in March, as we see every single year. And it's not just when you get to the Sweet 16, things get dicey. Like, no – as we've seen the last few years, these small mid-major you know, or low-major 15 seeds and 16 seeds, even they are better than they were 10 years ago, thanks to the transfer portal. So I, I don't know. I To win four games, no matter how good you are, is always a losing bet technically by the math. Now, would I be shocked if I'm wrong? No, of course not. I, again, the, the guy's been to eight of these things. He is one of the best March coaches of all time. And I wouldn't mind being Ron here, so that's that's where I would bet. I would I would light five thousand dollars on fire uh, to kind of will, willingly be Ron. We're gonna end on this one. Sad Spartan writes in favorite burger toppings. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. I'm a very boring eater. I have the palate of a five year old, so I go beef, cheese most of the time. If I'm feeling spicy, we're gonna go ahead and throw an over hard egg on top or a fried egg. I don't care. It's just an egg on top. That's always fun. Maybe a little bit of bacon and some hot sauce. All right. That is the burger I'm going to go with. And he says also pineapple on pizza. Pineapple belongs in tropical drinks, my friend. And that's pretty much it. That's the only place I ever want to see a pineapple. Uh, pizza, sausage, and pepperoni. That's the only toppings that I ever want to see on pizza or like chicken occasionally too. All right. I'm sure you guys really wanted to know that when you tuned in today, but hey, when mailbag questions come, we answer them. We still have a lot that we have not gotten to. We're going to try to get into those next week. Again, I will reiterate this programming note. On Sunday, we will drop the Matt Wenzel chat all about Michigan State football, what's been going on in practice. We talk about who's going to rise in the fall. And then on Monday, recruiting chat with Brian Smith, our lockdown recruiting football expert. But folks, until then, hope you all have a sensational weekend. Take care of yourself. Love you all. Go Green.